Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today is a very special video moment. Uh, we're going to be doing, let me, let me read this, top 10 perfumes worthy of a backup. Or top 10 backup worthy fragrances. Now this idea was suggested to me by my Instagram follower, Eyes of Neverland. Thank you so much, Eyes of Neverland. By the way, you guys, you can follow me on Instagram, Super Jacob Backup, all spelled together. I do these kind of questions in my Insta stories often, and I ask you guys, hey, what you know, what video would you like me to make? And so I pick out the interesting ideas, the most interesting ideas. And today it's, it's this one. I thought it was a really interesting idea, actually, because we never really see videos like this on YouTube, like backup worthy fragrances. Now, obviously, it's very subjective because all of us love different perfumes. But that's why I was thinking to incorporate like a couple of fragrances, fragrances that I would definitely recommend backing up. But then also a couple of topics, you see, that I recommend backing up. Coincidentally, it's a similar approach and strategy that I had for my other video, uh, Top 10 Beginner Fragrances for uh, Beginners of a Perfume Collection. That video is particularly interesting because it delves into not just telling you here, buy these 10 perfumes. No, not at all. It actually delves into how to approach perfumery and the love of fragrance. Now, backup is similar in that respect because it focuses um, on how to think about your mindset when thinking about, okay, which perfumes are worthy of backups. Now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me or uh, subscribe to my Patreon, Super Decab, all spelled together for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of my patrons and members, by the way, so they get first dibs. They get to see all of this first and live before it hits uh, my public channels. So hi to all my chats, you guys. So um, the first perfume I want to uh, share with you is... I started purchasing backups of this one three, four years ago. And then when it got officially discontinued, I went ballistic and bought many, many, many bottles. And here you have it. That is Vivian Westwood's Boudoir. Now, uh, Vivian Westwood's Boudoir has been discontinued, unfortunately. Originally distributed by Lancaster and then the distribution shifted to Coty. I have the Coty version here. I have the pure extrait, the parfum version from Lancaster in my collection as well. But uh, this is the one I stocked up on. I bought a ton of bottles. And at a certain point, they were like dumping them for like dirt cheap. And I warned everybody on my channel. I said, you guys, it discontinued it. If you want it, get it now. And people were like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And now a bottle goes for like $300 to $600 on the secondhand market because it's gone. It's, not, it's no longer in production. So... Boudoir is something that I cannot live without. I adore it. This will be in my most beloved fragrance, of, one of my most beloved fragrances till the day I die. So, of course, it also holds a very emotional, sentimental value for me because, you know, I worked with Vivian Westwood. We shot a movie together, Vivian Westwood and I, called Art Lovers Unite. And yes, that day, Vivian, while we were shooting the movie, she was wearing boudoir. So it's... And she was wearing the Coty version of boudoir. So... You know, for me, this perfume will forever hold the most incredible spot in my in my heart. And yes, I stocked up on this one. So definitely boudoir, you know. Uh, another perfume that I highly recommend stocking up on because of a different reason. It's not discontinued, but it's a fragrance that... Um, does really well in different batch codes and especially as it ages uh it becomes deeper in smell because of the oak moss and also the bergamot slight labdanum ginger layering inside of it <clears throat> and the spicy note and that would be chanel's 
pour monsieur, the eau de toilette. Okay, not the eau de parfum, the eau de toilette. This is a 50 ml, but uh, no longer in production, but they do produce 100 ml still. Uh, I stock up on this one a lot. Why? Because this one ages really well. So, I have a lot of bottles for this specific reason. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Because I let it age like a fine wine. So I have always six or seven bottles in my collection of this one. And I let them, and I have them sorted out by batch codes, right? So from the oldest to the, to the youngest batch code. And I always, <clears throat> when I finish a bottle and I have to open a new batch, I always open the oldest one. So I let them age. But you have to have a lot of them in stock to let them age. Because otherwise, if you're going to buy it new every time you run out, it's going to be a fresh batch, obviously, if you go if you go to the Chanel boutique or wherever to buy it. So that's that's a that's a good reason to stock up any perfume in general. Uh, if you know of a perfume you love a lot, but that perfume tends to smell better when it ages a little bit, then you should stock up on it. And the best example I could give is um, Pour Monsieur. Now, the next one is, um, is a concept, okay? My third point is this. I highly recommend to stock up on any fragrance that has just been released and you fall in love with it. And the reasons are obvious because, as we all know, when a perfume is launched, chances are pretty soon after it's been launched, one or two or three batches later, they're either going to reformulate it for whatever reason, or they're going to water it down, or maybe they're going to intensify it even, but you, maybe you're just not going to like the reformulated version. It doesn't mean that the reformulated version is cheaper to make. Mostly it is, but in some cases it's not the case. But just to be on the safe side, we've been all burned so many times before, haven't we? You know, a perfume is released, we buy the first batch produced, we love it to bits, we use up the bottle, you know, one year later when the bottle is empty or two years later when the bottle is empty, or it depends how often you use the perfume. I mean, you know, if you have a lot of perfumes in your collection, you might end up using that one perfume in four years. And then four years later, you go to repurchase it and you buy a new batch and it's like, this doesn't smell like, you know, like what I like it to smell like. It's different. It's reformulated. So my tip to you is number three, right? If a fragrance has just been launched and you buy that bottle because you happen to love that perfume, I highly recommend budget permitting, of course, to buy as many bottles as you can. I've learned the hard way that that's the way for us perfume lovers, frag heads, <clears throat> you know, I am such a victim to, to perfumes myself. So, but uh, I've learned my lesson way too many times in the past. Have I just bought one bottle, loved it, used it up, then I wanted, went to buy it again and it was not the same perfume. Or it was then discontinued, even worse case. And then you're like, oh, oh gosh, now it's $400 a bottle. Like, so when they launch a perfume you like, stock up immediately. So this, but this is only valid for new launches. Examples? Sure, I got examples for you. This is unfortunately super expensive because it's the pure perfume of Gabrielle by Chanel. I'm not a fan of the Eau Parfum and the Essence, but the Parfum. Oh my God, this is the, the, the deepest, most beautiful white floral accord. It's just mind-blowingly beautiful. And when they released this, I bought three bottles. And you know what? I don't regret it because now it went up in price. So I'm like, you know, yay. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, batch code, the first batches uh, that were in rotation, 7501. When this, and you know, I don't use the Eau de Parfum and the Essence. I don't care for them. I did buy them and review them and I use them a little bit, but they don't hit the spot. This thing oh, hits the spot. So 
This one was launched in 2022. The Parfum of Gabrielle. Bought three bottles. I love it to bits. Another one, for example, that I bought <clears throat> several bottles of as it was launched. Also launched in 2022. And I fell head over heels in love with this one. Hermes Cabriol. Uh, Alcohol-free Osmanthus sandalwood concoction. To die for. I adore. Look how much I used up already. And I just got this one a couple of months ago. It's almost empty. But I got a couple of bottles stashed up from the same batch code. And the batch code of this one, the batch code, zero, wait, what does it say? Zero nine eight five seven. And then, unfortunately, another really expensive one, Sycamore. Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh, Sycamore Extrait. The Parfum was released in 2022. The first batch is seven. I don't know. Seven. What is it? Seven five zero one. Seven six zero one. Really? Seven six zero one. I bought two bottles. Because it's the first time Chanel ever released the Parfum of Sycamore. It's the first batch ever. I love it to bits. Bought two. That's the example. Now, now number uh, uh, four, the fourth one, is um, worthy of stocking up, hunting down vintage. So this is an example of how to stock vintage. You got to know what you're buying, okay? I personally am a hoarder, a hoarder of Poison by Christian Dior, okay? Um, and it has to be the Eau de Toilette, which is my favorite concentration. And it has to be the early batches, spray, not splash. I love the splash bottles and... who. Who knows, my channel has been following me for years. You know I have a ginormous collection of poison. All the bottles made from splash to spray, Esprit de Parfum, Parfum, Eau de Cologne, Eau de Cologne Light. I mean, there's been so many iterations and concentrations of this fragrance, but the Eau de Toilette first few years of production is the best one. And you can recognize it by the really thick stopper. Uh, the, the thick uh, lid, it's thicker because they've reformulated this one pretty soon. And then the, the sprayer nozzle shrank and got smaller. And then about 10 years ago, when I did my first poison perfume collection video, I explained to you guys 10 years ago uh, that uh, one of the ways of 10 years ago, emphasis on the 10 years ago, because I've seen a lot of people using this information, but never crediting me for it. But you're welcome. Anyway. Um, the address in the back is a giveaway. Not the only giveaway. The nozzle is also a giveaway. But you need to have the 30 Avenue Hoche in Paris. Later on, they shifted the address to 33. So you get a 30 address. That's a winner. And then you have to have the, the thicker lid and the thicker sprayer. And then you know that you're in the first three to four years of uh, production of Poison Eau de Toilette. When I find them like that, stopper, address, spray, I stock up because that's the best formulation of Poison ever, ever. And I do prefer the Eau de Toilette uh, to the Esprit de Parfum just because Eau de Toilette is, is more floral, powdery, round. Uh, while the Esprit de Parfum bites a little, it's a bit more spicy. Uh, and but I prefer how it's it's more the Eau de Toilette is more perfect. It just it's rounded off more elegantly, you know. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I stock up on this particular version of Poison. Highly recommend stocking up on it because it's just the best freaking tuberose with the poponux and plum you will ever find seriously from mass release fragrances um another one i would highly recommend um also from uh dior uh is uh this one from the collection privé 
range. It is au noir. Can you read it? Yes, you can. There you go. It's trying to focus on it. Okay. In any version possible, they tend to discontinue this one, then they bring it back again, then they discontinue it, then they reformulate it. You never know. And I've been frantically panicking about them discontinuing it for years. And every time, you know, I got a little budget put aside. Ah, Au Noir is back. Let me buy it. Oh, now they released Au Noir in 40 ml. Let me buy a couple of bottles. So I have that version as well for traveling, you know. So I have it in all the different sizes. Uh, well, except the 450 ml, which now they don't produce anymore. But they used to in the past when it was a Cologne. So in fact, I do have the Cologne version in green. Uh, the Eau de Parfum version in green, the Eau de Parfum version in this color. I just love it to bits, right? This is a Francis Courjan really done well. It's just divine, okay? It's a lavender masterpiece with a lot of immortel. Yes, it does smell like curry on some people. It doesn't work with every chemistry. On me, it smells of lavender, um, burnt woods, licorice, and um, fennel. Uh, it, it's just uh, divine, th this thing. Even in its reformulated state, it's divine. And I'm always terrified that they're going to discontinue it. And I just love it to bits. So I stock up on this one. Uh, this is one of those elusive fragrances not available in all countries worldwide. It comes and goes. So I'm always panicking. So uh, Noir, truth be told, Noir and Bois d'Argent are the only two Collection Privé fragrances that I uh, that I always say, you know what, buy them. Those are my two favorite ones. Now the next uh, the next one uh, is uh, well, <clears throat> this one I gotta say goes without saying. Uh, it's uh, it's an obsession of mine, and it's always. Uh, also on the brink of being sold out, uh, on the brink of, on the verge of being discontinued, on the verge of never coming back. And it comes and goes through these, you know, it's one of those mythological fragrances that there's always a rumor about it being discontinued. Then they take it off the website, then it's completely gone. Then one or two years later, it reappears. I mean, this perfume drives me crazy and I love it to bits. But I'm always also frantically obsessed about it disappearing. And because I love it to bits, I always stock up on it. And I highly recommend stocking up on it. And that would be Chanel's Cristal, okay? Uh, it is a Chypra like no other. It's an ashtray Chypra. Still, the Eau de Toilette has oak moss in it and tree moss, albeit slow, mo small quantities, as much as it's allowed to have. But I do love the current formula of it because... Um, it lacks that metallic opening that the OG had. Uh, and I kind of like it softened down. I love the current formula. So this one is in all concentrations, you guys. I'm just lifting the Eau de Toilette to not have too many perfumes in front of me here. But I recommend I stock up on the Eau de Parfum, on the Eau de Toilette, and also on Eau Verte, Eau de Toilette Concentré. The three crystals, okay? All three. I stock up on all three. In some countries, Dieu de Parfum has been discontinued. In other countries, Dieu de Toilette has been discontinued. So I've just received news that in Australia, the Eau de Toilette has been discontinued. In America, the Eau de Parfum has been discontinued. Apparently in France, they're still producing all three of them, but apparently all three of them are going to be shifted into purchasable only inside Chanel boutiques. Always these rumors come and go in waves. At the moment, there's a high, high, high probability and chance that they're gonna get they're gonna get the hatchet. So Cristal, because of all of these waves of rumors coming up and very low availability, lack of stock for years sometimes before they come back in stock. For that reason alone, I panic all the time. And because I love this perfume so much, I stock up on it over and over and over again. If you love your Chypras and you love this, the history of Coco Chanel, this one really depicts Coco in her last years. Uh, I highly recommend stocking up on it because if it becomes official one day that this one is gone, I do not want to live without it. Seriously, I, I, I would never forgive myself, <laughs> you know, not having um, 
this one. So yeah, uh, that's that. Now the next one, um, hold on. So the next one, well, connected to the crystal discontinuation, this is the next point. It's not a perfume per se, but it's a it's a point. It takes one of the 10 slots, okay? And that is, if you hear that a perfume you love is getting discontinued, stock up. Stock up. And you can see there's examples of this that I've mentioned thus far. Boudoir being one of them. Au Noir being one of them. Um, Cristal being potentially one of them. If you love a perfume, and that perfume is being discontinued and you have the luck to find out that it's about to get discontinued or that it just got discontinued and you have the luck to still find it at retail price in stores, stock up, run and buy as many as you can afford to buy. Because the second those perfumes are out of the stores, secondhand markets in the perfume communities, they're going to skyrocket, skyrocket. Midnight Poison, I'm looking at ya. Boudoir, I'm looking at ya. If you love a perfume and you find out it's about to be discontinued, stock up. That's just, that's what it is. Another one I obsessively stock up on, and it's becoming harder and harder to find vintage versions of it. Uh, it's the love of my life. One of the loves of my life. It is another tuberose, and it is... Uh, a heavy 90s synthetic tuberose. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. I even have the factice. Okay. Eden by Cacharel. Um, I mean, this is uh, one of the most beautiful perfumes uh, ever created. And also one of the most beautiful bottles ever created. This is the Splash bottle. Uh, created to look like a, a leaf from the Garden of Eden, but also like a nipple. <laughs> it's such a beautiful, in this marble glass, oh my God, gorgeous. I, I suck up on this, especially on vintages. I have a ton of the minis because it's really hard to find this vintage. Uh, so, But there's still a lot of minis available in, in Splash and uh, they are just so intense. And because they're so synthetic, they don't really go bad. They just become darker and more intense in smell, but they don't really go off. Even the current formula is fine. But Cacharel Eden, I can't even tell you how many bottles I have of this. Every time I cross paths with Eden in vintage form, I buy it. I buy it. I don't think about it. I buy it. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I love the smell. I just love how conceptual it is, how difficult it is to pull off. It's a challenge to wear this one. Uh, it can even be headache-inducing, but it's it's one of those perfumes that has so much character, and I respect it so much for that. And this is how I, you know, I, if you were to believe in paradise and all that stuff, this is how I envision Eden. Dangerous and overly ripe, all those fruits just for Adam and Eve, like they can't possibly eat all of that stuff and it starts to rot. So there's decay in that Eden. You know, there's something foul in there. Uh, the sexuality is sweaty in there. You know, the, oh my God, this thing tells me so many stories, books, movies. I smell this and I am in my own movie. So Eden to me, also, one of those perfumes, I'm always afraid they're going to discontinue, right? Always at the brink of extinction. So I, I kind of uh, stock up on it whenever I get a chance. You know, there's that. Um, the next one, I highly recommend stocking up on. It doesn't matter if you get it vintage or new. Even the new version has been discontinued, however. So it's really hard to find. But that would be Yves Saint Laurent. And I would highly recommend stocking up on opium. Now, opium, stock up, well, however, honey, if you want to do the eau de toilette, the eau de parfum, whatever you like. My preferred version is the extrait, the parfum. So whenever I find it, 
I buy it. And this one has been a bestseller since the 70s. So there's a lot of these manufacturers. That's the good thing. The Parfum has been discontinued. The Extrait has been discontinued. But it was hugely popular for decades, which means that a lot of them have been produced. There's a lot of them in circulation. You can always get lucky if you're a little bit patient and find the Extrait for a very good price. You know? So... The peace of mind I have with opium is that I will always be able to hunt it down. But that's why whenever I find it for a good price, I buy it. You know, I don't care if I have 10 bottles or 15 bottles. Every time I find another one for a good, relatively good price, I buy it. I, I hoard opium. It's just a majestic fragrance, really. This one is worth having. It's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous on every level. Seriously. Mmm. Delish. Delish. Okay. The knish is delish. And uh, so we did... Uh, one is missing. And uh, we did we save the best for last? Well, yes. In a way, yes. And no. No, because there's maybe perfumes I like more than this one. But yes, the best for last because this is for a nerd. Of, of perfumes, a, a perfume geek like me. I think only a perfume geek like me can understand this. Uh, and let me tell you what, what fragrance it is. Okay, so this one I highly recommend, highly recommend stocking up on. But the reason why, it might surprise you. Uh, Chanel number 22, okay, in all its concentrations. Parfum, eau de toilette, eau de cologne, uh, voile de parfum, whatever it is, the toilette, uh, eau de parfum, eau de toilette, what is extrait, all of them. But, oh, Aisha is asking, Jacob, do you recommend the current formulation of opium? They only have eau de toilette and eau de parfum in current formulation, and I only recommend eau de parfum in the current formulation, personally. Okay, back to number 22. All right, so I always say this is one of the most giving of Chanel perfumes. This is the Eau de Parfum, okay, that I have here right now. I just hunted this one down a short while ago. Mm, gorgeous. Batch code 6301. It's about a year, year and a half old. Listen, this one is the most giving of Chanel perfumes because it's so friendly and welcoming, but it's at the same time the most aldehydic. And here's why I hoard number 22. The reason is it's also the most unstable of all Chanel perfumes. I've never said this before. Here we are. And I am the geek that I am, and I try to buy one from every batch. I know it's almost impossible, really, uh, but... And let me show you. Why? Why do I collect this like crazy? Because as you can see, <laughs> this is an eau de toilette, a little bit older. A batch code 5801. Uh, so this one is like nine or 10 years old. The batch codes repeat every eight years. But anyway, it is a very, very volatile and unstable perfume. It changes a lot. Here is the Eau de Parfum batch code 3501 from several years ago, from like four, three, three, four years ago. You can see it's a different color than, than the Eau de Toilette. They, they age differently. They change differently, you guys. They are so unstable. Hold on. I, I, I got more to show you. This baby just joined the uh, Fashion Bunker um, a couple of days ago. <laughs> I know. Obsessed. Um, obsessed. Um this is the old school. This is one of the first batches of the new bottles produced of the Eau de Toilette because it still has the white frame. You see the white frame around the uh, the black bottom of the box. That's also a giveaway. But um, 
2101. So this one was produced around 2009. Yeah, around 2009. So these bottles were released around 2007, 2006. So this one is 2008, 2009-ish. But it's been always stored. Look, the person never used it. So this one didn't change as much as this one in color. You can see very different colors. Very different colors. Even though this one is younger than this one, because there, but it's a different batch, uh, highly volatile, highly unstable perfume, highly unstable. This one went rogue. This one went ballistic, even though it's younger than this one. A lot of factors play into it, right? Was this exposed to light, more or less? This one has been closed in its box for over a decade. So obviously it didn't turn this dark, but this one is also very aggressively aldehydic and acidic in the opening. The top notes are dead here, right? They're like very aggressive. But the but the bottom, it's an incense bomb. This thing is amazing. Even though this is a batch code, like I said, what is this? Five something, this is two something. So there's like three years between these two. And this one is older than this one, but it didn't turn as much. And this one is not so incense-y. It has a totally different composition almost. This one is more like 80s version of number 22. And this one is like its own thing. They're highly unstable. Every batch of number 22 that I've had thus far, doesn't matter if it's eau de toilette, eau de parfum, or parfum, is different. The newest batch that I have in the eau de parfum, this one is so different from the eau de parfum I bought several years ago. Now, mind you, by different, I don't mean better or worse. They're all amazing, and I am obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with, like, every time they release a new batch, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go smell it to see how it's different. This I don't know what it is about this perfume that makes it so unstable. It changes so quickly. Like, this is a perfume that three to four years, after that, it's not fresh anymore. And usually perfumes never go, you know, I say perfume, some, I have some perfumes from the 40s, 50s, and they're still amazing. They still smell amazing today. By fresh, I don't mean that this one goes sour and bad after three or four years. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, after three or four years, this thing is going to change completely. And it's going to become something else. It's like a metamorphosis of a perfume. Okay, it's going to morph into something else. Yes, the DNA is preserved. We still recognize number 22. But each one of the batches, it's like a Tamagotchi. It's going to like age differently according to how you treat it. Highly unstable. If you keep it in the box, if you move it around too much, if you shake it, if you mix it too much, it's going to completely change the outcome of how this thing is going to smell three or four years or five years from now. So to have all of these, and I have even more, I'm just showing you four, but I have more. Yeah, I have a lot more. I know. I have also a problem. But anyway, my love of 22 is endless. And uh, just to rediscover this perfume for every new batch they make, because it's so unstable in the formula itself, it always has a twist to it, even in the fresh batches. Oh my God, this is so gorgeous. So this particular batch of 22, Eau de Parfum, is very heavy on, on the Ilang Ilang, for example. Not so aldehydic heavy, but very heavy on the Ilang Ilang. Very heavy on the Ilang Ilang. The, he the heaviest Ilang Ilang I've ever smelled in a 22 perfume. Eau de Parfum batch 6301. While the Eau de Toilette 2101 is the heaviest tuberose I have ever smelt in a 22 perfume. Insane. Insane. Like this is, it's like they overdid the tuberose here. This one is the most insane vanilla and super aggressive aldehydes. While this one is a struggle between tuberose uh, and vanilla are more prominent in this formula. Eau de Parfum, batch code 3501. If you are a fanatic of nuances like this, 
in perfumes and you are a geek like me, number 22 will satisfy your craving for mysteries, discovering little nuances with every new batch. Number 22 is the most giving of Chanel perfumes also for that reason, but highly unstable. So there you have it. Those would be my top 10 worthy of um, hoarding, <laughs> getting a lot of them, you know, uh, buying backups of them, uh, purchasing backups of them, whether they be secondhand or not. You know, like I said, some of these were purchased new. Some of these were purchased secondhand. Uh, what can I tell you? Yeah, 2022 is where my heart is. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this list. If you have any uh, suggestions, place them down below in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and thank you to uh, to my Instagram follower for giving me this idea for this video. Uh, much appreciated. It was it was a great challenge to pull together this list and to share it with you. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Jesus says, cool video. Thank you so much. Um, such a sparkling beauty, says Audrey. Yeah, for the number 22. The Picky Ricky says, lovely video. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts. And until next time, don't forget to never give up on fragrant love. Subscribe.